This video is going to show you how you can quickly and easily customize your error pages. Let me first tell you what an error page is. You may have encountered them before if you've been on the internet any length of time. For one, you might enter a URL to a page on a website that actually does not exist. Maybe you got an incorrect URL from the creator of the website. Maybe you just entered it incorrectly. There could be a host of things. Maybe the website's just down for maintenance, whatever. Let me demonstrate here what a 404 error page is. In this example, a 404 error page is what you're going to get whenever you enter a URL to a page that does not exist. And this is what you're going to get whenever a page that you typed in up here does not exist. Now there's a bunch of other error type pages as well. If you're trying to access a page that is password protected, it might come up and say forbidden. I think that's a 403 error page. There's a bunch of different types of error pages starting with a 4, like 400 something. Another one starting with 5, 500 something. That's more serious. That's more of a server type error. And I think there's even some like in the 300s that start with 3s. Here, let's go ahead and take a look. Come on back to our cPanel control panel. Scroll on down to pretty close to the bottom in the advanced panel and click on error pages. And if you've got several different domains or even add-on domains assigned to this particular cPanel account, you'll have a drop-down box right here. Let me show you. I think I've got one over on this one. This is a totally different web hosting account that I just toggle back and forth to kind of show you the differences between two different web hosting services. And here we go. Yeah, this one will show all the different domains that I've got assigned to this cPanel account. So whether it's add-on domains or just additional main domains, if you've got more than one, you'll have this drop-down box here. And if you wanted to customize your error pages, they will be domain-specific. So make sure you choose the one you want. And in this case, there's only the one. So we come on down here, and these are the most popular error pages. And if you want to see all of them, you can click on this, and it will show you all the possible error pages in existence, at least insofar as your web hosting service is concerned. Now, a lot of these I would just simply not mess with, but you have the ability to customize them if you wanted to. And I'm going to demonstrate that with the 404 error page like the one I just showed you. Let's come on back here to the common error codes, and you just click on the little pencil icon here to edit it. And you've got some options here. You can just type in direct text, or you can type in HTML. And you've got these special tags up here that will document, for example, the visitor's IP address, maybe the requested URL to let the person that is seeing the error page see that, okay, I see where I made the mistake. It's not actually this, it's this. So you can put in the tag that shows the requested URL and that will show them this forward slash and then this page right here. And you can do that by adding this particular tag. Just click on that button and it shows it right there. Here, let me demonstrate. Let's back this up here just a second. And I've got Composer, which is a free HTML editor. Got that open and I just created this HTML page pretty quick. You know, just something customized. And what I want to do here is just grab the source and that way all the color the link, all this stuff. If I had an image in here, everything that's in here, by me grabbing the source, all of this here, from HTML to HTML, I don't need this stuff up here. This way I'll be able to keep all of this information intact. And if you're not familiar with using Composer, maybe you've got a different HTML editor, you can create a website or a website page, post it on the internet, and then just go up to, let me get this out of the way, go up to the page anywhere you've got it, right click and view page source and you can select all of the HTML code here and do the same exact thing. Okay, so, but I'm demonstrating this using Composer. Now in this case, I just put my cursor right up here at the very top, click on paste and all the stuff right here will show the exact same way as it did on Composer. Now if I wanted to, I can come on down here and this video is not on HTML so I'm not going to bother too much on what all these codes and stuff mean just showing you that you can do this I'm going to put in here and then the hit that and let's say 
and that. Okay, now then, and while limited, you do have some formatting options here. Frankly, I would much rather do this stuff in a editor like I just did with the Composer and then copy and paste it into here. Go and click on Save, go back, and here's the normal or default 404 error page. And there we are. That's the customize. Now, I didn't add some HTML code to bring these guys down. Let's go ahead and go back here and do that now. 404, I want to re edit this. And right here, this is just putting a break between the two lines of code. So that, that will bring this down on a second line all on its own. Likewise with the URIP address on another line all on its own. That's what this stuff's going to do. And click on save. Go back. Come back here. Refresh. And there we go. And that is how you can quickly and easily create a customized error page. And this is not just for the 404 error page. But you can do the same type of customizations to any of the other error pages. Of course, you want to make them specific to that type of error. Something like this will not work on a 403 forbidden page, but I think common sense will play a little bit in that. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that let's say you come on in here and you no longer want this customized error page. You want to delete all this stuff and go back to the way that it was. Well, the problem with that is just by deleting that, does not bring it back to the way that it was. Let's refresh and I'll show you. This is what it is now. To get it back to the way that it was, because you should have some type of an error message in here, whether it's the default or the one that you customize. But to get it back to the way that it was by default, you want to go into the file manager for that particular domain you added that customized page on. Go into file manager and there'll be an shtml page in there for the error page that you customize. In this case, it's the 404. Just select that, delete it, and refresh, and there we are, back to square one. And that is how you can customize your error pages.